is a lot of things. It's a MIDI controller you can use with your favorite hardware and software. It features direct integrations with many popular DAWs. It has a ton of hands-on controls you can assign to whatever you'd like. And it's a solid performance keyboard in the studio or for live use. When you first connect your launch key to Cubase, it's actually automatically set up and ready to go. If we open the lower zone and go over to the MIDI remote area, you'll see launch keys mappings on screen so you can get familiar with the layout of the controls. The most immediate feature set is probably the transport controls. Using these on launch key, we can play or stop our session, arm recording, and even enable looping. There's also a button to enable the metronome, which is really handy and makes recording super fast. We can just arm the metronome, hit record, and away we go. The standalone features of Launch Key are actually still available while using it as a controller within Cubase, which is really cool. Swapping between these modes is easy. You just hit Shift and then use the pads to change the mode between Session, which is our DAW control mode, Drum mode, Scale Chord mode, and User Chord mode. These features like locking the keyboard to the scale or locking the pads to play chords within the correct key are really useful if you just want to jam around and come up with different ideas. So I've locked it to the scale now and we can just have a quick noodle over this beginning part. If you're like me though and have terrible short-term memory, one really handy feature to know about is the retrospective MIDI recording of Cubase, which is actually part of the launch key integration. So if you come up with something cool like that and you didn't bother to hit record or forgot to hit record, you can actually just hit capture MIDI and it spits it right back out into the session for you. Once you've laid your parts down, there is actually a quantize function built into launch key as well. So once we have our clip laid down, we could just hit quantize and boom, the whole clip is now totally quantized. With things well underway here, if you're anything like me and you're incredibly indecisive about literally everything, there is an undo button built into launch key we can use. So let's say we're not feeling this pad, we could delete that, redo it. Oh no, we want that back. You can just hit undo and it's back. But if you're like me and you're also incredibly indecisive about literally everything, you can also redo things by hitting shift and then undo to redo whatever you just did. Launch key also acts like a mixer, which is a great way to get hands-on control in your sessions. You can control all the key parameters of a track like volume and panning. You can swap between different track groups with the left and right arrows, and you can actually use launch key as your mixer for your whole session, including the master fader. You can also control each track using the pads by selecting tracks with the white pads, arming them with the red pads, and control solo and mute functions for each track by swapping over to the second mode using the stop solo mute button. You can set the pots to control the device, which we'll talk about more in a moment, the volume, and the panning of the track as we've done here. The faders, on the other hand, can be set to control the device parameters or volume. With that, I've got some ambient textures and noises down here I'd like to blend into the intro of this track, so let's use launch key to start start mixing these in. I think that sounds good, but we could probably widen these out by just panning out two of these tracks. And I'm just doing that with the pots here. One of my favorite features of the launch key integration with Cubase is its ability to utilize the quick controls. Quick controls in Cubase are basically like macros that you can use with pretty much whatever you want. And on the launch key, we can use either the pots or the faders to control these quick controls in our session. Here in the middle section of this track, I've got this sort of acidy synth line going. <laughs> And I've set one of the quick controls here to control the filter cutoff. So on launch key, I can set the pots to control these quick controls. So I'll go to shift and change the pot mode over to device. I've assigned the cutoff to quick control two. So if I give this a play and start tweaking that pot, I can control the cutoff of the filter in the session. Launch Key also features user-definable chords, which is really handy for ambient and experimental genres like this, where you wanna just hold out a really long sustained drone. 
But what's cool about this is while you're holding down a drone with one of the cord pads, you can actually improvise over the top of it. To define a chord, we can go into the user chord mode by hitting shift and selecting the user chord pad mode in the lower pads. Then we'll hold down a pad and play our chord. Let's do something like maybe a nice big minor nine chord here. Now we can play that back and we've got a chord stab. Once you've defined your chords, they're stored here on launch key. So we could play this back and start adding some little chord stabs or something to this session. And so that is the grand tour of Launch Key and its integration with Cubase 12. Launch Key is ready to go right out of the box, but if you want to take deeper control, it is worth mentioning that all of these controls and profiles can be set up however you want to use them in your sessions. So if you're just getting started and you want to plug it in and play, you could do that. Or if you want to take a bit deeper control over everything Launch Key and Cubase has to offer, you could do that as well.